Hey, I'm Alex and I work on transposons, the cheaters of the genome. And I want to spend the next uh, two minutes to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. And to set the stage, let's uh, think of what you might typically associate with uh, Sweden. For example, this uh, children's book. So you might have read this in your childhood. And uh, yeah, as you can see, there's a bunch of kids dancing around a Christmas tree. But if you have a slightly different way of reading it, such as if you work on genome evolution, you might think that, well, here we have a bunch of uh, organisms with three billion base pair genomes, hum humans basically, dancing around a spruce tree with uh, roughly 20 billion base pair genomes. So somehow this spruce tree has seven times as much DNA. And the question is, why is that? And uh, I guess in the last years, people when have sequenced these genomes and realized that actually many of these differences of, uh, of uh, genome sizes are actually due to transposons. So kind of a brief metaphorical way of describing them, I guess, is uh, um, chain letters. So kind of to keep with this metaphor, transposons are somehow able to, to tell the host, the host cell, basically, to make more copies of themselves. And uh, this is not, a, not an unnoteworthy mechanism. So if you look at the human genome, our own genome, at least 30% of our genome is made up of uh, transposons, and another maybe 10% is made up of uh, retroviruses. And just to put this into perspective, just bit less than 2% of our own genome is made up of, uh, of our own, our own protein coding genes. So I guess um, there's more of these parasitic genes or selfish genes in us than there's us in us, whatever that means. And I guess it's a bit scary to keep that in mind. And I guess the overarching theme of my lab, what we're working on, is to look at the impact of transposons in evolution, especially speciation aspect of it. And we focus on birds. And I want to finish with one example of what we found last year, which is basically that we found a bunch of birds having the same transposon, but then for some reason it's not present in other birds, but we find it in a bunch of uh, parasitic nematodes. So we have a working model for how this transposon is able to move between birds and nematodes, and we assume that, for example, it's hitchhiking just by going into a virus and then being co-transmitted into different nematodes, and then this nematode is then co-transmitted um, by blood-sucking insects between different birds. And I guess to make a long story short, this means that somehow all genomes are more or less connected with each other, and transposons play some role in that.